What's up, everybody? This is Dr. Paul Thomas with Startup DPC, and today I'm doing a little bit of a rundown, a little bit of a mailbag. You know, people have questions about starting and growing their direct primary care practices, and I'm here to answer them. So if you want to ask me any questions, you can hit me up, paul at plumhealthdpc.com. Yeah, that's my uh, business, Plum Health DPC. But I also have this uh, side business that I do, Startup DPC. It's really focused on educating doctors on how to start and grow their direct primary care practices. With that being said, let's jump right into the mailbag. Um, so somebody asked, who can I get to design my logo for my direct primary care practice? And, you know, some people might say, oh, you should hire somebody off like Upwork or Fiverr. And, and that's all well and good. However, I have a better idea. Why don't you go onto your Facebook page, your personal Facebook page or your first personal Instagram or personal Twitter and say, Look, I'm, I'm looking to build a beautiful, wonderful direct primary care practice, and I have this great idea for a logo. Maybe you hand drew something. Post that photo and, and ask for help from your community. Ask for help from the people who live in your neighborhood, who live in your city, who live in your town, so that somebody can step in and help you make that perfect logo. And who knows? That person could be a huge fan of yours for the rest of your career. They could become one of your patients and be with you for a long time. Um, and that post that you make is going to be inspiring to other people in your community. They're going to want to see you succeed. And you're going to have a bunch of fans who are following your progress, seeing what you do, how you do it, and how you make their lives better. So my advice would be, you know, you can go to Fiverr as a last resort, or you can go to Upwork as a last resort. But really seek out some people in your community. You know, I had somebody design my logo, and now they're a member of my practice so when I think about my logo, I think about the designer, I think about how they're part of my practice, and I think about how we work together to create business in our lo own uh, local ecosystem. And so that brings a smile to my face because it's really empowering and it's really special. All right, some other things that were uh, talked about. Another question I received was, you know, what is this forward thing? Have you heard of forward or goforward.com? And um, the short answer on this one is that Yes, I've heard of it. It's like a sexy startup out of Silicon Valley. It's founded by somebody who was a part of Google. And essentially what they do is they have a higher price um, membership model for healthcare. I would say it's more of a concierge level of, of uh, cost, perhaps not of service or of care. Um, and they're really only located in wealthier communities like San Francisco, Chicago, New York, LA. So, um, you know, I don't really think they're going to help us in this direct primary care movement, but I also don't think they're really going to hurt us unless maybe you're directly competing with them geographically. Um, but I think they're kind of going for like a posh, sleek look that's like otherworldly. You know, it's like walking into um, something from 2001 A Space Odyssey. I think that's the kind of vibe that they're going for. So I wouldn't really be too concerned about that. I think just do your thing start your own direct primary care practice and um, you know, do your best. So um, yeah, build your own brand. The other question that I saw out there was about what, ha what happens when a patient leaves your practice? And um, this is a tough one. You know, it really sucks when somebody leaves your practice because oftentimes as a direct primary care doctor, it's not really a transactional relationship. You're really investing a lot of your heart and soul, time, effort, and energy into the care of a patient. And it can be kind of hurtful, I guess, when somebody leaves your practice. And so I would say, first of all, you know, don't take it personally. People have job changes. People move cities. Uh, they lose their jobs. They gain a new job. They lose an insurance coverage. They gain an insurance coverage. It's really not you. It's them and their situation. So that's number one. Uh, number two is, you know, I have a 30-day cancellation policy in my clinic. So if somebody closes their account, uh, they're actually going to be with us for an additional 30 days, and they may uh, incur an additional charge based on their billing cycle. So if they cancel on the first, you know, they're not going to get in another charge. So they're just going to get that charge for the first, and then we'll close out their account. But if they cancel on the 25th, um, they're going to incur another charge on the first of the month, and then we'll close their account out on like the 23rd or 24th of that following month. That kind of protects us from, you know, revenue loss. But it also ensures that we can deliver good care to them over the following 30 days and then help coordinate care for them going forward. 
So you want to send their records to their new PCP, make sure that they have a new primary care physician that they're working with, and then send their records along so that they can have a seamless transition of care. All right, I'm going to see if I have any other questions that uh, came in. Uh, let's see, where is this at? Oh, yeah. Somebody was asking me about, you know, they're a PM and R doctor and they want to do direct primary care and they really focus on uh, PRP or, you know, just injections. And so I had said, basically, you're going to have to do a lot of legwork to work with all the chiropractors, all the primary care physicians, all the sports medicine doctors, all the orthopedic doctors in the community, and let them all know that you are doing PRP, that you have a membership model or you have a cash pay model to try to generate a lot of referrals. You may have to act like a drug rep and in that you have to bring a bunch of business cards, a bunch of promotional materials, maybe a few more than a few free lunches, just so they remember who you are and that you are providing PRP in the community. And then beyond that, you're probably gonna have to widen your scope. If you truly wanna be a DPC practice, you're probably gonna have to widen your scope just a bit to take care of more primary care type concerns and not just PRP. Uh, yeah, it'd be cool if you could do maybe 25% of your care as PRP, unless you have a huge margin on your PRP, then maybe you could suffice on that alone. But I'm guessing that if you wanna be in the DPC model, you're gonna to have to broaden your scope take care of some primary care issues. And, and then, yeah, you can have a niche focus where you're the best um, deliverer of joint health or joint care. Then beyond that, you know, if you're really focusing on PRP, you wanna get on your personal social media channels, like your personal Facebook page, and then post every week, make a video or make a post every single week about how you're the guy or you're the gal in the community who's excellent with PRP, who's excellent with joint health, and you could really become a community resource, a trusted person in your community uh, to help people through those issues. So uh, that, those are my, that's my mailbag for today. I hope you loved this video. If you did, um, subscribe to the channel, smash that like button. Yes, I went there. And then if you wanna learn more about how to start and grow a successful direct primary care practice, we have our book and our website and some courses on our website. You know, Feel free to go through those courses. It's a wealth of information that I put out there to help people like you, you know, be successful in this model. And we're really excited to offer a new service. Um, we're actually gonna do an annual uh, masterclass for direct primary care doctors. We did this last year. We had about uh, seven doctors come to our office here in Detroit. And we had this kind of like an intimate um, uh, service where we uh, showed other doctors how to start and grow successful DPC practices. And we're really excited to bring this um, we're gonna launch it. It's gonna be uh, May 14th and May 15th. That's like a Friday and Saturday. So on Friday night, people will arrive in Detroit. We'll go out for dinner um, at a restaurant nearby. And then Saturday morning at 8 a.m., uh, we'll get up together and we'll do this uh, amazing course. Uh, we're gonna go through eight really big topics on how to start and grow your DPC practice. It's gonna have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time where you can ask any question you want, basically and get really clear answers, no, no punches pulled. You know, this isn't gonna be recorded, so we can basically talk uh, really clearly about you know, what it takes to build a successful DPC practice. I'm really excited to do this with my practice partner, Dr. Raquel Orlick. And um, if you wanna learn more about that, head to our website, um, startupdpc.com slash masterclass, and you'll see all the information there about it. Um, we're amped, I'm amped. And I hope you are too. All right, guys, thanks for watching this. Uh, sorry that this went a little bit long, but I'm just excited about life right now. I'm excited about building successful practices. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.